Temba Bote was born in 1979. He is a mountain man from the Makal region and he is one of the Nepal's foremost high altitude mountaineers and expedition leaders. During his 21 years span of mountaineering experience, Temba led more than 22 successful expeditions to 8000 meter mountains. Temba guided his first 8000 meter expedition to Mount Everest. Apart from his nine times on the top of the world, the most significant summits were Winter K2 and Winter Nanga Parbat Rupa Face. His recent leading role was together with 14 summits expedition Honza Travníček on Mount Amadablam and Mount Manaslu expedition in 2022. His exceptional understanding of mountain climate and exact judgment in choosing a perfect mountain summit weather conditions made him one of the most reliable expedition leaders in Nepal. Today, I will be discussing with my guest the evolution and shift of Himalayan mountaineering. He revisions from one of the most experienced climbers. His perspective will come as a surprise to many people, I am sure. Temba, thank you very much for finding time for our meeting and for our interview. Thank you for you, thank to, you. to have me here. How many years are you involved uh, in I am now 40 years old, uh, running off my age. And uh, in mountaineering, how many years are you involved? I think I started a big mountaineering expedition since 2012. All right. Yeah. So maybe 10 years now? Uh, yeah, almost running 10 years, let's say now. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, what peaks you have? Uh, I climbed a lot of mountain uh, within 10 years. Uh, uh, let's say first from Everest. Uh, Everest I climbed already nine times. Okay. And then second highest mountain, Mount K2, I did one time. And then Loche, I think three times. Uh, next one uh, is called uh, Annapuna 1, is the one of the hardest and danger mountain. I did that one also in 2016 with Carlos Soria. Mm -hmm. I was the team of Carlos Soria. Then after that, uh, Manasolu, I think probably now must be including the road fixing. But some year I climbed like same time, like twice. So I think five, one, but six times I climbed Manasolu. And then next, Ahmad Dablam, I think more than nine times because I used to do lots rope fixing before, okay. uh, including guiding. Mm -hmm. And then I did like a couple of winter expeditions, uh, but only one say success. Uh, it's called Pumori, mm -hmm. as next to the Everest region. That was I climbed in 2017 in winter. Uh, team was Spanish, Carlos, uh, sorry, Alex Chican. Yeah. Probably you guys know, he's the yeah, yeah, famous yeah. climbers. Uh, then after, I did Daulagiri also a couple of times, but I couldn't reach the summit, just below the summit uh, due to the client problem, we returned back to base camp. And I did several peaks, uh, like 6,000 Mera, La Bouge, Island Peak. Uh, and then next, uh, out of the Nepal, I did one winter expedition in Nanga Parbat from mm -hmm. Rupal Face, it mm -hmm. was 2015, but we couldn't summit, we reached like uh, 6,300 meters. And that same year, it was one Polish team as well there. Mm -hmm. I think they are a little bit higher than us. No, right. Mm. And then Pakistan, totally I've been there like five times. I did one winter expedition also, but we couldn't summit like last winter, mm -hmm. let's say, mm -hmm. with the year of the accident. Yep. And then that time uh, was two teams. I was the leading international team. It was a mixed team like mm -hmm. uh, from every country's nationality people. Uh, but we, second team, we couldn't summit. We reached like, uh, me, I reached almost uh, close to Battle Lake. And due to the bad weather, uh, I returned back all my members. But who don't have Sherpa who went individually, uh, those people actually, they couldn't come down as well due to the bad weather. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, they died over there. Yeah, it's, it's happening like this so far. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Uh, how is it in the winter? It's absolutely different, totally opposite. Uh, but, or how is it? Uh, yeah, totally different, but looks like a more safer mm -hmm. uh, from the avalanche uh, and the rock falling as well in the winter. Normally, big and frozen, and we don't need to walk in the, during the night because during the night we can work as well. So, normally, we used to work during the day. Mm -hmm. So, I feel, in my opinion, as like uh, because one problem is like a short uh, where, uh, summit window comes in the winter. Like in a day, like five hours, sometimes two hours of good weather, then it start like getting worse. But overall, like 
is uh, because uh, people used to think oh winter as like minus 40 minus 50 but we used to wear the good uh, equipment like mm -hmm. we have everybody used to uh, climb or walk with the like above minus 40 uh, equipment I mean like Brannett mm -hmm. oh, 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 oh. worldwide famous equipment <coughs> so me in my opinion winter is not really danger yeah, but the problem is only that the short windows. Yeah, the window yeah, for, for windows summertime. Very short, very short. Okay, yeah, okay. Very short. Uh, on K2, you have an inventor as well? Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. I'm just uh, talking now about the K2. And it was just uh, the first successful attempt to reach the summit in winter of yeah, K2? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were the same group, same team. This same is team, great, same. Yeah, great it was achievement. Very nice. It was very nice. Good yeah. experience as well. But uh, one worst things is like lots of accident that year. Like, yeah, yeah. Five people Nimal we lost. was the leader of the expedition. Uh, I was, or, or he leading, was a member of the expedition, I think. I was like leading the expedition, part uh -huh. of the expedition uh, guide or Sherpa, how we call Sardar, we call. Mm -hmm. I was uh, leading from Seven Summit. Still, I'm working with Seven Summit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was. Uh, it's nice, but uh, I would like to say, don't scare like uh, which we used to think about the winter. You know, wow, winter is like totally different, but not really like that. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, tell me, how does change the tourism and the mountaineering during, the, during these 10 years when you are involved in this style? Uh, it changed a lot. First change is mountain, it changed a lot. So now, days almost beside the monsoon, every month you can climb above 8,000 meter high mountain in Nepal. Uh, so okay. you mean the change of weather? Yeah, change of weather, really? change of mountain, everything changed. Let's say like when I was a porter, like about 10 or 11 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, let's say, that time, every people used to say September, October is the good weather. After then, not possible to trek or climbing. And March, April is the good weather. After that, not possible trekking. But nowadays, looks like every month possible uh -huh. to do treks or mountaineering. And this is possible because of change of weather? Global, global warming, prop, yeah, uh -huh. affecting the global warming. Uh -huh. This is very interesting. Yeah, it's, it's very bad. Uh -huh. So, as for example, now, Days we are getting best weather in November in Nepal. Uh -huh. Normally in November no is snowing in Nepal. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Few times like in high passes like above 5,000 meter high passes, but beside that it is almost everywhere dry. Yeah. Yeah. What, what are the other phases of change during these 10 years? Uh, then change is of course it changed a lot climbing materials uh -huh. as you have like the and equipment. Then, yeah. The quality. Yeah, quality change a lot. Then uh, next is like climbers are coming more sports. Uh, like who are really mountaineers, they are becoming more stronger, more better than before. So the people so, are better now? Yeah, better people well are better. Well prepared, yeah. stronger. Yeah, but this is the two fact. Like climber, climber, like climbers are better, but not all the climbers. Let's say like some people, they come just for willing. Uh -huh. Even they don't know how to use the mountaineering gear, but they used to come. I'm not, yeah, think, I'm not, sense, yeah. So. Uh, saying about this, but really climbers are becoming more uh, technical fitness level, uh -huh. everything is improving a lot, yeah. okay. and more confident as well. So you may say that in the growing number of people who are trying to reach the 8000 summits, uh, there is bigger amount of well prepared mountaineers, right, 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 but right. together with it yeah. comes the group of people who have no experience, only will. Yeah. And they usually product the problem. Right, right, yeah. Because it's happened like this as well. But in expedition, which I got experience during these 10 years, uh, like teamwork mm -hmm. and the leading is much, very important. Let's say like for Manasulu is like above 8,000 meter high mountain. You don't need to be a, like very sport climbing. Normal people also they can climb, but they need good guiding from best camp. Uh -huh. Good. They good. They need like good planning from best camp. To think about so, people. Think yeah, about weather. Yeah, think yeah. about conditions. Planning so, rest. Yeah. Planning acclimatization. Right. Yes. Yeah. According to like people fitness, and then there is we have to know the story of their climbing, and they, we have to know the fitness of their, from which uh, sector they came to climb. You know. So according to this, if we able to plan, as uh, few people suck, uh, unsuccess in mountain, mostly yeah, that's like in my opinion, like 85 people. Mm -hmm is uh, so far achieved the luck yeah. they are willing. Many people say that now the mountaineering is just only business, that you can bring there, even the monkey and put it up. Is uh, it right? This is not really true. This Explain, is not because please. Say. This is not true because you can imagine like above 7,000 meter high, uh, you have to walk with the oxygen. Mm -hmm. Like 
above 7,000, one bottle of oxygen, you can feel like 25 kg uh, weight of air. So you can imagine now how you can push them up there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just you can help pull off like one step or maybe you can help for uh, other uh, way. But this is the totally wrong way because I climb with many unexperienced climbers uh, uh -huh. in Everest or uh -huh. other mountain as well. So we never do that. That is a totally wrong way. Mm -hmm. But it's normal, you know, just connect the safety, just uh, connect on a rope. It, it's, it's normal, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So did you say several times to your client, you will not go up, you will stay uh, here? Because this is, we have to uh, know the condition of his body. Mm -hmm. Are like uh, fitness of uh, his body or experience. One of thing is your. fitness, one fitness, thing is experience, yeah, another yeah, thing is just uh, confidence. Uh, attitude, sickness. Yeah, um, yeah. Because uh, I would like to say for everyone, people used to think like normal climber, but not professional climber. They don't think you have to sleep above camp four like five days or camp three like five days, six days. But normal people. If you do like this way, like sleep five days, six days, then you never can go further than that. Mm -hmm. Because you can't eat there. It takes time to uh, uh, adjust. The, the your, digesting. Yeah, digesting as well. Like it takes time to adjust your body with elevation as well. So you can't eat because there's nothing doing. You know, just sleeping is, doesn't help for climbing to, if you want to improve more. So we have this problem like who come like uh, individual, like who use like just Peskim luxury service. And then they used to say, like, we want to climb ourselves. But it's, you, they can do, but they need very good planning guide from the West Camp. Okay. Yeah, we have seen lots of this. Uh, still, like, uh, this kind of situation I'm having in Seven Summit as well. So there are, like, comes, like, number of people, from, some unexperienced from sea level, some they are already climber. But mostly, like, middle climbers, they used to do this way. Okay. Go camp three, sleep five, six days, and then come down West Camp. And then they, again, they, after one week, they go again, they do that. But they never gain the elevation. And they mm. do nothing, just go sleep. But this is never help for okay. climbing. Yeah. They used to say that before touching summit of Everest, it's good to touch the grass, to come back down uh, and then return. What do you think about it? Uh, it helps a lot. It helps a lot. Because I also did a couple of times like this. This helped a lot. But you never know. Sometimes when you came down to the like, grass, grass area, like green area, let's mm -hmm. say where you have oxygen. And then after when you go back, sometimes you get altitude sickness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if happen then like this, spoils. yeah, then it's if, yeah. So if happen like this, then you have to quit your expedition. So yeah. yeah, so we have to think by both way, you know. So because it's not hundred percent guarantee, you know. When you mm -hmm. go down, you will be the better, the up. better up there. So this this year also happened with me as well. Like three mm -hmm. of my member went down to Namche. When he went back to Beskem, one got altitude sickness. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's... All right, it's yeah. tricky. Yeah. It's tricky. Uh, so, if I understand it properly, you think that the shape of business now is all right. It's not a problem of crowding of unexperienced and dangerous people. It's all right. Uh, this is the... Everything depends on the leading. Because I have led it so far. Biggest group was 85. 65 in one team so i'm okay. leading this kind of big team so if you're able to make good plan if you're able to make the good uh, team because we have to when you have like more than 20 people uh, we have to separate like two or three teams so they're like do put like unexperienced team in one groups a middle one one group and full Foster. of experience one yeah. extra one team so we do we manage by this way so if you put like all of them in the same team it then it will be massive Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. it's happened a couple of times with me as well. Uh, help me, please tell me your opinion. I can't, I can't solve it. Uh, there are two ways how to develop the high mountaineering. One option is just to keep the old, old-fashioned line by myself, by my abilities, and um, without any influence from the others. The other option, growing level of comfort coffee right. shops in a right. base camp and a high service. I understand both sides are important. Both sides generate a better life for right, Sherpas, right. for local people. But if you choose by yourself, what do you say? Uh, this is because where I'm working, they have also like many different level of clients. Some they use only base camp service. Some they use only above base camp service. Some they use only below base camp service. But 
they used to say in the beginning, we are normal people. I'm from normal family. I'm not like a rich people. I need, just, I need like simple service. But when they will be there, they'd never say this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so because of this, we, we never think uh, like he is the, this kind of client. He is enough for him, this quality of service. For him, he's in a little bit high quality of service. We never divide this. Okay. Because it's like a big problem happened with us also. So, uh, in my opinion, try the best from our side. Mm -hmm. yeah. With all the service, which yeah, is possible. Yeah, yeah. Well, because once the time is difficult, everybody enjoys the good service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, yeah. Because people, is, you know, as it changed like within five minutes, you know, they are meant to be. And one problem is, here, like when you have like uh, international team, we call like from every countries that we put in one group. It takes time to understand each other because you guys has like different thinking, mm -hmm. different planning, and different timing. And American has a different, and Asian a different, Indian different. So people, you know, when there are other people that are having luxury service, he can understand like. But this way is easily faster understand European. Yeah. Let's say, okay, he, he has paid, maybe he's paid better than us, or maybe he has like more service he deal with the company. But when you have an Asian, but Asian never say like this, okay? Mm -hmm. it's, we are all human beings. <laughs> 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 we need like one quality, all uh, same quality of the yes. service, yeah. It's, it's difficult, this okay. is to explain as well for people as well. So. In the beginning, we practice. You guys are best game service. You go in this dining. You are the full board service. You go in this dining, and you are getting these things and it not include this, those other things. When we explain, one day they understand. Okay, of course, yeah, we I know that. But from second day, third day, people used to think, you know, why I have these things? Why not? Why things? Uh, yeah. If I speak, if I speak something there, maybe I can get more. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's, it's difficult. All yeah. right. So, All right. in my opinion, like this uh, financial is, uh, we don't compare any mountain here. I mean, like, yeah. yeah, how much they pay, like, but try to do our best from our side. Whatever right. available there, we can provide them. Yeah. How do you see the future in mountaineering next 10 years? What will change? What will happen? It change, it change a lot. It change a lot. Because now, let's say, people get. It's like equipment, let's say, which are using in equipment. It changed a lot. Like, uh, uh, I haven't seen before, like, we are using, like, uh, cooking gas up there. Now we are using the cooking gas. And some company, they are putting the bakery, uh, uh, coffee shops, like, a bar for a night. <coughs> and then it's, it changed a lot, like, all the equipment as well. Now people, actually, honestly, when book, when they book with the company, they don't say, I need this mm -hmm. size of 10, I need this size of mattress. But when they come to the best camp, came to the best camp, and then, you know, of course, people like, <laughs> always want better than <laughs> before. So it's, it's changed a lot for everything, because normal tourists as well, they want like high quality of service everywhere. Yeah. And for the future, for the next 10 years, what do you think what will change? Make it imagination. It changes a lot. It change. Every year changing a lot. Every year changing a lot. Every year, every year. So, so people now spend more money for mm -hmm. the luxury service than get profit, you know. So it's, I think it will be big competition in the future. All right. Yeah, it's very difficult to fight now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Welcome, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank for you, having sir. me, too. Thank you for listening, and see you next time. You're Peter.